Hi, stitching friends. I'm Amy. I am the Globetrotting Stitcher. And wow, it's been a long time since we spent some time with you. I think we're going on six weeks since the last time we filmed an update, um, which we certainly, we knew we might have a little bit of a stretch. We didn't expect it to be quite as long as it's been. Um, so we'll tell you about our crazy month of October, most of which was good and then some of which was not so good. Um, but, but yeah, it's really great to be back with you today. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Thank you as always for coming to spend time with us. We really do enjoy sharing a bit of our time with you and knowing that you're sharing a bit of your time with us. Um, and if you are new and just finding us for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy what we're doing here and, um, and all the, the beautiful stitching that we have to show you. So I'm gonna just do a couple quick life updates and give you a, a little bit of a bird's eye view on what we've been up to and why it's been so long since we filmed. And then we will get into all the stitchy goodness because I know that's what you all wanna see. Um, so the last time we filmed an update, we told you that both Gary and I had some, uh, some travel coming up. And so shortly after we filmed our last update, Gary uh, went back to Providence, Rhode Island for a week. So he grew up in Providence and um, and still has some family in the area and a number of friends. And so um, he tries to get back there at least once a year to reconnect. And so he just, um, he went and did that. And I think he had a fantastic time. Well, I know he had a fantastic time. Um, and yeah, I think it was, it was something that he badly needed. So Bear and Sophie and I really missed having him around, but, um, but I'm glad he got to do that. And then two days after he got back from Providence, he got on a plane again with me. And we flew to Hawaii for our first official vacation away from home in what, four years, something like that. We haven't really gone anywhere. Um, Long time. There was this little- Many moons. Many moons. There was uh, this little like, you know- My bad, I shouldn't do that. Uh, there was this little thing, uh, pandemic, and you know, nobody was going anywhere for a while. And so, um, so yeah, but no, it was really, it was really great. We got to go to Hawaii and we'll tell you a little bit more about that later, but, um, it was badly needed. I didn't realize until we'd been there a couple of days and I started to finally really relax and just not think about work and not think about life and my to-do lists that, um, that I started to feel really rested. And it was, it was just such a lovely trip. So, um, uh, more to come, lots of beautiful photos. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. We came back from our, um, our visit to Hawaii and the day after we got home, my dad had to have a spine surgery. Um, and it was like a pretty, it was a pretty major surgery. It was one of the old fashioned kind where they have to actually, you know, big incision, open you up, all of that. The surgery itself went really well. Actually, the procedure went more quickly than they had expected it to. Um, and dad came home the next day. And then ever since then, it's been a roller coaster of complications and medication issues and in and out of the hospital and the ER. And so, um, it's, it's actually been really a trying time. Um, I've been going back and forth a lot to, to provide some care and we thought we might lose him at one point. And so I'm happy to say that as of a couple hours ago, he's home. He, he appears to be really on the mend, but um, it's, it's been a pretty stressful experience. Um, I, I was teasing him the other day and I told him that he owes me another Hawaii vacation because all the stress I got rid of uh, when I was in Hawaii is all back, but he thought that was funny. So anyway, that has all, that's just been keeping us so busy that, um, that we're just now getting back to, to being able to film. So with that having been said, let us delay no further. Let's take a look at what we've been stitching on over the last several weeks. Um, and these are in no particular order. I'm just going to pull them as they come up in the stack here. So the first thing I'm going to show you is my full coverage piece. This is Rose Trellison by Heaven and Earth Designs. I am, uh, it's stitch I'm stitching it on 28 count white Lugana, two over one using a half stitch. Um, the last time you saw this, I was getting close to the end of the third row of pages and I had finished all of the stitching in the second, um, the second floor of the house or the inn. And I mostly had just background left to finish. And so I was saying, I thought I would get that finished, but I wasn't quite sure. Well, this is where I am right now. And I apologize, it's in the cue snap so you can't see the upper part here. But um, as you can see, I did manage to finish all of the fill in over here and get, get that background section finished. And so I completely finished the stitching on page 18 
and moved down and started on page 19 and I'm now on the fourth row of pages. So um, that felt like passing a really big milestone. I'm well over halfway down now and, um, and really, really enjoying this. It's also nice to get to kind of a new um, a new look within the background where you got kind of like these minty trees with the beautiful purple flowers. So I think that's very pretty. This whole row of pages, um, I'm, I'm kind of reconciling myself that this stitching is probably gonna go slower finishing this row of pages. There's a lot of white, which tends to be confetti heavy. And there's a lot of just confetti in general in this, this uh, row of pages. So I think it's gonna take me longer to work through those than it has the pages above. Um, but I'm just gonna have to, um, as, a, as a progress stitcher, that sometimes is hard to be patient with, but um, it's also one of the more beautiful sections and I think one of the more interesting sections of the overall design. And so um, I'm looking forward to seeing this evolve over the coming year, probably year plus. <laughs> um, but yeah, really, really pleased with this and how it's coming on. Um, and we'll just, we'll see how we go. So that's Rose Trellison. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. The next piece I worked on, um, or the next thing I'm going to show you is my travel stitching. Um, so I am working on the Christmas cheer pin pillows, uh, chart, which has a number of designs in it. It's by Jeanette Douglas designs, and I am stitching on the Noel pin pillow. Um, I am stitching this on a piece of 36 count, which, which one is it? Um, 36 count stars, hollow blend linen by R and R reproductions. So the last time you saw this, it was a brand new start. Um, I had started it on my way home from Rwanda and I hadn't gotten very far, but I had gone far enough to make my first big mistake, which was that my borders did not meet up um, and they didn't meet up in a really big way. So when I picked this up over the last couple of weeks, well, let me show you where it is right now. Um, so here's, whoop, here's where we are. Not a ton of progress for as long as it's been since the last time you saw it, but um, I also haven't had a lot of uh, opportunities to work on it. So um, when I did pick it back up, I went ahead and frogged out the section of border that was problematic and I fixed that. So it's not quite, I haven't quite finished stitching out this outer border here, but um, I'm really close. I also started stitching in some of the music notes and the word Noel. And then some of this section here in the middle where you've got a twig with um, some birds and berries and so on. So um, it's pretty sweet and it's coming along really nicely. I did take this with us when we went to Hawaii, but literally the only time I pulled it out of my pro uh, project bag was while we were in the airport here in Seattle waiting to board our flight. So, um, but it should, this one should get a lot more love here very soon. Tell you about, I'll tell you more about that why in a few minutes, but that's where I am on the Noel pin pillow. Um, and I think this is really pretty. All right. The next piece I'm going to show you is my weekend stitch. I am working on Butterfly Port Mauve by Heaven and Earth Designs. Uh, I'm stitching this on a piece of 28 count white easy grid Lugana, also two over one, and also using the half stitch. So the last time you saw this, um, I was at about 7,200 stitches and I was working my way in on filling in, um, continuing to work my way down through page one and doing the fill in. And right now I am at just over 8,000 stitches. So I've put in almost 800 stitches on this, which is not a lot um, given that on my normal stitching schedule, I'd put in about 200 stitches per week. So I'm I'm several week, I've missed a number of weekends of working on this just with everything going on with my dad and um, with travel. So um, yeah, a lot of a lot of missed weekends, but I am making progress. I am getting closer and closer to finishing the fill in on page one and um, have also started working my way down into page two where some of those elements of the design are, are gonna be showing up. Um, one thing that I'm really enjoying with this piece is um, the, I've talked a number of times on my channel about the Stitch Stitchketeers, which um, that's a group of uh, stitchers based, or they're all from the Netherlands. 
And um, I want to say there's five of them and three or four, four of them, four of them have floss tube channels. So um, Jemima, who is the rocking stitcher, Yantina, who is Yantina Stitches, um, Lydia, who is Lovely Stitches, and um, Debbie, who is Creatively Yours, they all make floss tubes. And then there's Alice. Hi, Alice. Um, and she's Honeybee Stitcher on Instagram. She doesn't make her own floss tubes, but she occasionally uh, makes an appearance on Debbie's channel. So anyway, they are all working on the ornament size version of this. Um, and it's been really, really enjoyable over the last couple of months to watch them all working on it. They're all working in different sections of that ornament. And because it's an ornament size, it, it really, um, you don't have a lot of the background. You just get to the main elements of the piece right away. And so it's so inspiring to me to watch them working and see that coming in. Um, Debbie just recently posted a video um, and Alice was was on it with her. So I got to see two different um, two different people's progress on, on this and it was really nice. But anyway, they keep me inspired to keep going on this one. Okay. I think the next piece we'll show you is Gary's. Um, and if you've been around here any time at all, you know that that piece is uh, Captain America by Awesome Pattern Studio. Um, Gary is stitching this on a piece of 16 count pewter, uh, pewter Ada, and he's using all of the called for DMC. Um, and so I will, Gary, over to you to talk about what you have been working on. I've been working on Captain America. Um, <laughs> I guess what I mean by that is uh, I've actually finished page three. I've got one page left and I got a little bit of start on that, but look at that shield. The shield is done uh, and that, that just kind of changes the whole thing. To me, it looks a whole lot better with the, with the shield there. Um, yeah, so that, that's where I am. <laughs> I forgot to say the last time you saw this, uh, I wasn't done with the shield, um, <laughs> but I am now. Uh, and like I say, I'm, I'm uh, working my way down to finishing up uh, page three and then I'll be done with Captain America. Um, it's, it's actually, a, it's a fun piece to work on, but it is very trying because if you, if you look at, uh, at his chest, at the very bottom of his chest, that's where I started page three. There's lots of do four here, skip four, do 12, do four here, skip two, do one. That it just, it gets, it gets overwhelming after a while. But because I've been doing this for so long, this particular one for so long, uh, it's, it's not as much of an issue anymore. But um, yeah, I, I like it. And I, I really don't know what I want to do with it. I've got some ideas. Um, part of me wants to keep it. Another part of me wants to maybe, maybe use it for, for the good of all mankind. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see how that works out. Um, anyway, so that's where I am. That's uh, Captain America. And if anybody remembers, I was working on a globe and uh, another one. No, I haven't done anything uh, on any of those. Uh, what I will say is I went back to uh, Rhode Island, as my, my wife put it, or I guess Amy would be another way to put that. Um, I went back to Rhode Island uh, for my fo uh, 40th, 40 year, or whatever, I'm old. <laughs> I went to my high school reunion and I was the only one that was constantly on the dance floor. Anyway, that's the way that worked. Uh, and then we went to Hawaii and again, she'll get into that in a bit. Uh, but I'm going to talk about at least one picture. We were in a botanical gardens and I had an action figure with me and they had a particular name for a, a plant species. And I managed to get a picture of the, the uh, action figure along with that plant species. Here it is. Just enjoy that for a moment. <laughs> Okay, moment's gone. Uh, now uh, we're just gonna go ahead and go back to um, Amy. <laughs> awesome. Okay, um, the next piece I have to show you is my fancy lady. So I am stitching Celtic Winter by Lavender and Lace. Uh, working this on a piece of 32 count haunted Belfast linen by Picture This Plus. And as, um, as many of you know, I'm doing a really significant conversion. So the original design is a woman in a white, a white gown with gold metallic trim and some plum colored accents. Um, and I am doing a conversion that changes that to a white and silver gown um, with a big like midnight blue cape. And, um, and so yeah, uh, really, really big difference here. 
Um, so the last time you saw this, I had finished stitching all done doing all the cross stitching of um, on the medallions that run down the left border of the piece. Um, in fact, the only thing I had left to do to finish that border out was the beadwork on the very last of those medallions. Um, I had also finished all of the um, the rows of banding across the top. And I had finished her, her little evergreen bouquet or evergreen ring with the candles and was stitching down into her skirt and just working my way down through her cloak. This is where she is right now. And frankly, there is not a huge, huge difference between last time and this time, unfortunately. Um, so I did finish the beadwork over here. I've now finished all the cross stitching in the, the letters. So I just have the beads to finish here. Um, I worked a bit in this small, small medallion border and then of course carried the white down further into her, into her gown, um, as well as carried more of that cloak, the stitching down in her cloak. I also am really happy to say that all the metallic stitching in her skirt is done. And so now it's just fill in with beads and cross stitches. Um, this one I was stitching last week, uh, when my dad had his surgery. And then of course we ran into all the complications. So I had several nights where I simply did not pick this up and work. I didn't do any stitching at all. Um, and then I ended up spending a weekend at my parents' house helping with nursing my dad. Um, I took this with me thinking, thinking, oh, he'll be resting, I'm gonna work on it. And I set it up, but I may have put a, a handful of stitches in. I really didn't have any stitching time. It was, it was very busy. So um, she just didn't make as much progress as I would have wanted her to this month, but that's okay because, you know, sometimes sometimes life must take precedence over stitching. Um, and I will be getting back to her and spending more time on her next month, and, and that will be fantastic. So here she is in all her beauty right now. Okay. And the last piece that I have to share with you is my sampler. Um, and this is one piece that I have made quite good progress on and I'm really happy with where I am on it. So um, I am stitching Winter Rose Manor by With Thy Needle and Thread on a piece of 36 count raw Edinburgh linen. Um, and I'm using most of the called for flosses. So the last time you saw this, I had also made really good progress. I had taken it with me on my trip to Rwanda and I was able to finish the entire top half of the design. I also finished all of the pink fill in on the side and front of the house um, and had started stitching in the, um, the snow at the bottom of the piece. So this is where I am right now. Um, I took this one to Hawaii with me. I ended up not stitching very much in Hawaii, but because I stitched the whole week on this before we went to Hawaii, I had, I had made good progress during then. So that's why you see, see quite a bit of progress here. So um, since the last time you saw it, I finished stitching this fence and gate, um, finished stitching in this bird here and the, the kind of the flowers and stalks, put in a few more little elements up here and made quite a bit of progress. Oh, I stitched in all of the curtains and the fill in on the windows on the house and then stitched all the trees across the bottom and made a lot of progress on filling in that snow. So really good progress. This piece is literally almost done. The only things I have left to do to finish this off, um, there's a little uh, white basket down here that holds this greenery and then I need to finish filling in the snow and then this will be finished. So um, I am going to be I am going to be pushing for a finish on this over the next couple of weeks, and I'm pretty sure the next time we um, we have an update for you, I will have this have this done. I'm, I don't want to jinx myself by saying that, but um, but I'm I'm really excited about where this one is, and it's just been such a pleasure to stitch. So I'm looking forward to getting it to the point where I can start picking out a frame and getting it ready to put up um, in our home and display it. So yeah, Winter Rose Manor. One other thing I want to mention about this piece, um, and I'm sorry for the hanging thread here, but I have been doing this as a stitch along with Sarah. She is Stitch Addict on Instagram. Um, and she, yeah, she and I have been kind of keeping pace with each other pretty well. Um, the last time I saw one of her updates on this, 
she said she had only one or two rotations left and she would have hers finished as well. So I think we are both very much closing in on a finish here in the next few weeks. So it's going to be really fun to see her get hers wrapped up as well. All right. Uh, that is it for the stitching today. So um, we are going to switch gears a little bit here and just share, um, share some photos and, and, um, some of our experiences and some of the fun things we did in Hawaii. So if that's not something you're interested in and, and all you're, all you're here for is the stitching, that's great. Um, this is a great stopping off point. And, and then if you want to see some beautiful photography from, um, from Gary, then stick around and, and we'll just take a couple of minutes and tell you about some of the fun that we had. Um, so we went to Kona and this was actually my first time to Hawaii at all. I had never been. I My family didn't really do tropical beach vacations when I was growing up. My third time. Yes. Gary is a tropical beach vacation lover. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a new experience for me and it was a lot of fun. Um, I'm just trying to think. I uh, It was a lot warmer than I was expecting it to be. And I, we, we, were, we kept hearing from everybody that was actually warmer than normal for this time of year. Um, there was one point during the week. So, you know, you go outside and it's, it's hot and it's humid. And then you go inside and the air conditioner is always on. So then you get really cold. And so there was one point as we were getting close to the end of the week and we were, we were at the botanical garden and I was just, it was so muggy and so hot. And I was like privately thinking, I don't want to complain, but I'm just kind of, this is, I'm tired of being hot and sweaty. And yeah. And then we all came out. <laughs> yeah, we were all like, you know what? This place is beautiful, but sticky. Sticky. <laughs> and we're tired of the sticky. We don't want to be sticky. And you literally went from just being like hot and sticky to in a room where it was pretty cold. Um, so it was like you stepped through a door and you were in a completely different climate. So it was a colder climate. Uh, but it was good. Mind you, we were in Hawaii, so <laughs> whoa, right? <laughs> kind of lowers the threshold of what you can complain about or a pie. I don't know, whatever. I don't, I think I said that wrong. Anyway, um, we did have some phenomenal food while we were in Hawaii. Um, really, really good food. One of the, um, so we were traveling with another couple who are good friends of ours. And we've been saying for a long time with this couple that we, we should, uh, we think we would travel well together, but we'd never tried it. And so Hawaii was sort of our like test flight to see how it would go. And it was a big success. We all we all really enjoyed traveling together. But um, the one of the um, yeah, one of the other people in the couple, Amy, her name is also Amy. She's also a redhead. So obviously she's fabulous. Um, but this, she had been to Kona before. And so she was. Do you have something you want to say? No, no, no. Fabulous. She's fabulous. Fabulous. I'm fabulous. A pair of Amy's. That's right. <laughs> it's a guaranteed winner. Um, no, but anyway, she um, she had lots of great suggestions and experiences for us because she'd been to Kona before, um, including food experiences. And one of the things that we did a couple of times um, was we got malasadas, which I had never heard of malasadas. I obviously never had a malasada. Donut. It's, yeah, it's basically. But it's more than just a donut. More than a donut. It's like a little bite of heaven. <laughs> no, but it's like these big puffy, yeah, like a fried dough. And then they, they fill it with um, like different, different um, like gels, not gels. I don't know. Gel <laughs> Jellies, don't know. Just, just different fillings. Just, they had yeah. cream fillings. They had, yeah. I got like a strawberry and pineapple and you got like a custard, I think. I got a Bavarian cream. I tried a mango and I tried a passion fruit. Is it a box? There's four, you could get more, but the box we had had four. Mm. And they were like multiple meals because you had the snack and then you had some for breakfast in the morning. And there was a malasada truck that was at the end of the road where the house was that we were staying. And so anytime we left our area to like get on the highway to go somewhere, the malasada truck was there speaking to us and calling to us. Yeah, but the malasadas in the truck were not as good as, they were good, don't get me wrong, they, they were very good. But the, the ones we got at this place up, there's, I'll put a picture of it. I think it's called Tex or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, those, those were fantastic. They were bigger and uh, they, they were, the stuff was on the inside, not just kind of smeared on the top. It was very, very good. Amazing. The other really good treat that we had was shave ice. 
Um, and there was a truck that sold that too. And I was kind of like, really, a snow cone? Come on. It was so good. I don't think we did take a picture. You're gonna have to imagine. I think I have a picture on my phone that's very- We'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Us eating our snow cones very happily. They were delicious. It was so good. So anyway, good food. Pants are tighter now than they were when we left. I gained four pounds. He gained four pounds. He doesn't gain weight easily. It's not fair. Oh. Um, one of the other things that we did that was one of my favorite days was we went up to Volcanoes National Park. Um, and if you know anything about Kona, there's three volcanoes and the area of the park that we went to is where I think it's considered, the, I think it's technically the most active volcano in the world, but it's the, it's, um, she's, she's telling me, I wish I knew that a little bit beforehand, <laughs> <laughs> but well, listen, you, we made it, we made it. Well, it was amazing because this, so this particular volcano is still very active. In fact, um, back in 2018, many of you probably saw on the news that it had, a pretty significant eruption and it like wiped out a couple of towns and some roads. And I'm, I was really surprised because we live, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, we're in the ring of fire. So we've got volcanoes all around us here anyway. Um, but like if they were as, I was just surprised at how close we could get to the active part of the volcano, because we actually, we took a hike and we hiked kind of around the outside of the, the rim of the caldera, of the, where the active caldera is. This was another thing that was really interesting to me. And I was like, I had no idea, but apparently a volcano is gonna have more than one crater. And this volcano that we were walking on had two craters. And so there was a big crater where the, it's still really active. And then there was kind of a ridge and you could hike along that ridge and down into another crater that's apparently not active or not as active. I'm not sure but you could actually hike along the bottom of the crater and it looked like um, it looked like pie crust and you could see where the lava had like bubbled up or burst through and you could see the layers of the of the of the the crust of the earth it was fascinating um, so that was really cool and then after we did that we ended up going out to there's a place that you can drive to um, and then you hike in a couple of miles to this overlook where you can actually see you have to do it at night it has to so we had to we had to hike in the dark and we had like our phones for flashlights we weren't super prepared but we hiked in to this overlook where you could actually see the lava actively like doing its thing and it was so amazing and i just kept thinking oh my gosh how lucky are we to have this incredible experience like to actually see this live and in person it was it was really amazing um, okay, so some other things that we did, obviously being Hawaii, we um, we did a fair bit of swimming um, and going to the beach. Um, I got to go snorkeling for the first time, which was amazing. Um, I just, I I hadn't been in the ocean since I was in high school. And- um, I grew up on the ocean. Grew up on I grew up on the Atlantic. Yeah. And I hadn't been since I was in high school and I've never been to like a warm ocean um, where you're not completely freezing, just getting in the water. But it was it was so amazing to me, and the water was so blue. But it was just amazing, like you put it on the snorkel and the and the thing, and you look down and you're like, it's fish. <laughs> you know, it's like it's really beautiful fish, and there's all these different kinds, and you just watch them, and it was incredible. Um, and actually, the day that we went snorkeling, we were getting ready to leave the beach, and the other Amy and I were standing on the edge of the water, just kind of looking at little schools of fish that were swimming near the shore. And I saw something, and I was like. Amy, is that, is that an octopus? And she's like, oh my gosh, yeah. And so we were like standing there and we called the guys over. And so we all stood there and we watched this octopus just kind of make its way along, you know, the sh near the shoreline in the water. And none of us had ever seen an octopus like- In the wild. Yeah, it was amazing. And, and also none of us took a picture of it. So I'll have to find a way to substitute our octopus sightings. Sorry about that. We were no, in the moment. We, we were in the moment and sometimes you don't need to take a picture. Sometimes you just got to enjoy what's happening. Yeah. The other thing that we did not get a picture of is sea turtles. So there was one night where Gary was kind of hanging out. With the... uh -oh. That's all right. I thought I stopped it, but I, I guess I did not. <laughs> oh, um, Gary was, uh, he was not feeling super great. And so we, the rest of us went ahead and took like a, a beach walk toward, you know, the, the end of the day and kind of watched the sunset from the beach and got to see a whole bunch of sea turtles along the beach, which was really nice. And all of us thought the others were bringing their, their phones. And so nobody had a camera. 
And then we got lost on the way back in the dark without a flashlight of any kind and not really a great sense of where we were. And two, two reasons why I should have gone. <laughs> And the poor Gary's like stuck at the house, like, where are they? Do they need help? <laughs> so anyway, that was fun. Um, let's see. Um, oh, the other thing that we saw that was so cool was manta rays. Um, we, uh, we went to this place where they, they shine a light into the water and it attracts the, the plankton, I think it is. And the manta rays eat, wanna eat the plankton. So the manta rays will come and swim around. They were fascinating. That was just so super, super cool. We, we didn't actually get a chance to swim with them, but we did watch some other people swimming with them. And it was it was really, it was like you're in Jacques Cousteau or something like that. I guess I just dated myself, but it's like you're in SeaWorld for real. For real. Yeah, that's on my short list of if we ever get a chance to go back to Hawaii, I would love to swim with the manta rays. That was really neat. Um, let's see, what else did we do? Oh, Gary mentioned that we went to the botanical garden. Um, it was just beautiful. So many beautiful flowers. And we kind of hiked down through the woods into like, there were different sections of, of beach views and, and ocean views there. So that was really, really There, there were so many different, um, really pretty flowers uh, that at one point I just, I couldn't take any more pictures. I just... I was, I, it was just too many. Um, so I opted to just enjoy the rest of them that, that I saw. We'll, we'll be, you'll see a few of those, uh, shots, but it was, it was, it was outstanding. Um, mm -hmm. very nice flora. Yeah. One of the things that I found really amazing there was they had all these beautiful variegated leaves with different kinds of markings and, and on them. Stunning. Absolutely beautiful. So that was that was a real highlight. It was probably the hottest and stickiest place of the entire trip, but it was so beautiful. It was a big highlight for me. Um, of course, we went to a luau because, you know, Hawaii newbie, you got to take the Hawaii newbie to a luau, uh, which was really fun. Uh, really beautiful setting, be you know, wonderful dancing, wonderful food. Uh, they had a fire dancer, which was really cool. And in that case, they asked us not to take pictures. So we don't have any pictures of the, we got like the pre stuff we've got and the food we've got pictures, but uh, for cultural reasons, which I totally support, they didn't want anybody to shoot a video or take pictures. So we can't, can't share that with you. But if I had my lighter, <laughs> I, I'd do this, but I don't, I don't have my lighter. Maybe, maybe you could insert a little video of you doing a fire dance with, uh, I'm sure that would be just as exciting. Mm, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but you did get some pictures of the, the hula dancers with their little coconuts. Yeah. So that was tiny coconuts. Tiny, tiny coconuts. We'll move right along. Anyway, lots of beautiful sunsets. We watched the sunsets and they were so beautiful. Lots of beautiful beach scenes. I know Gary's got a lot of photos of different places that, uh, the beaches that we saw. Um, and then probably one of the coolest things, the last day that we were there, um, we drove out and there's a black sand beach that we went to. And I was kind of prepared to be disappointed because I was like, is it really going to be a black sand beach? Like, is it just going to be like dark gray sand and they call it black sand? No, it was like really legitimate black sand. It was very, very cool. Um, so that was a really... We got to stand on the... The rock, or the, I, I don't know if it's rock or what, what you would call it, but anyway, where the uh, lava had cooled and the, you get to go walk out really close to the water and uh, the waves would come crashing in. We got some really good uh, shots and some video of that. And here's, here's one you can see. Uh, Amy is just kind of sitting there and, and we waited for a wave and boom, this one came. We got a great shot from that. Um, the beach was just awesome. Um, there's, there were every, it, it's nice when you go to a place and everybody you see is smiling. Yeah. It was really nice. Yeah. We, people, we just had so many positive experiences and met so many nice people too. We went to an art gallery. I think you have some really cool pictures from the art gallery or the building outside. Well, the building outside, uh, we get, there was a, a mural and it's a lady's face with her hair flowing and in that building. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different artwork. Some of it's pottery, some of it's uh, photographs. They have all different types of art and it was a great building. I actually managed to bring home a little bit of pot. 
or actually a little pot is the best way to put that. Yes. Uh, and you'll, you'll see what that means. You'll see what that means. Yeah. And there was also a, a butterfly that we had a little bit of fun with a butterfly. Oh yeah. Thing. The butterfly picks were nice. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it was a really great trip and, um, badly needed. And so, um, yeah, can't say enough. It was, it was a really good time. Um, as far as like just finishing up talking about globe trotting, um, you, you may see that uh, our set looks a little bit different and that's because it's we're filming this fairly late at night because I'm leaving for Nairobi tomorrow morning. I'm taking my ma my last business trip of the year um, and just with <laughs> yeah, just with um, everything that's been happening with my dad this past you know couple of weeks, um, every time we were like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna get the next update filmed, um, I would need to go and you know, help with will help with his care. so, um, we've kind of run out of time. And so we're doing this late at night just so we can make sure that we get an update, um, filmed and published relatively soon here. Um, but yeah, so I'm heading to Nairobi and I'm looking forward to being done with traveling for the year and just kind of settling in and being at home for a while. Um, so as far as what we're going to be working on, we'll just wrap up with what we're going to work on for the next couple of weeks between now and when we film our next update. Um, I'm taking three projects with me to Nairobi. So one of those is Easter by the Cricut Collection. Um, I missed working on that in October entirely, which I was really sad not to get to it. So I'm really looking forward to getting back to that one. Um, I am also going to be taking my Winter Rose Manor with me and pushing, as I was telling you earlier, pushing for a finish on that. And of course, we'll take my travel stitching, the Noel Pin Pillow, um, and We'll see how far I get with that. I've got some long flights, so I think I'll get some good stitching time um, on that. And of course, um, Gary, I th I'm sure we'll pick up Captain America and- I'll do some stuff on that. We'll do some yeah, stuff I'll do some stuff. But you know, he, he was saying to me the other day, he's like, I have no idea how long it's gonna take me to do this last page. It's a anyway, lot. If you think about it, I started that Captain America, it had to be a, at least a year ago because I took it with me on my last trip to Providence in November of 2021, and I took it with me again <laughs> in October of 2022. So it's been about a year that I've been working on that, but I've done other stuff in the, in the interim. Uh, some we talk about, some we don't, because it's, you know, not talkable. Uh, oh. No, just kidding, just kidding. Oh my. Anyway, um, yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm, I, I want to get it done, so <laughs> I'll probably get uh, some more done between now and the next time we film, which we hope will be uh, not long after Amy gets back. She's gonna be gone about a week and a week or so. Uh, maybe we can do some recording after that. Um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. So um, anyway, I think that's it for us for today. Thank you again for coming to spend time with us. Um, we hope that you, uh, if you have not already subscribed to our channel, we hope that you will and that you'll continue to come back and, and hang out with us and keep an eye on what we're doing. Um, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and, uh, we'd love to have any comments that you might have. I always love interacting with you. And, um, I apologize that I was a little, little slow on responding to some of the comments on the last video. I think given what we've shared about what we've been up to, you'll understand why. So I'm hoping to go back and catch up on those, but do really, we read all of your comments and really do enjoy them. Um, and if you, if you want to make sure you never miss an update, you can hit the little bell, uh, for notifications from YouTube, um, anytime we post a new video. So, um, we hope that you are doing well. I hope that everybody had a fun Halloween if you celebrated and we will look forward to catching up with you really soon. In the meantime, happy stitching. Bye-bye.